Alright, the first thing I'd recommend is learning Python, as it's going to be your main tool for analyzing and manipulating data. Central topics would be variables, unpacking, if conditions, loops and functions including working with args and quarks, core data structures like lists, tuples and dictionaries, comprehensions for those, package management, and finally working with classes. The roadmap and description provides a blueprint to do this in the right order, as well as links to free well-crafted courses on YouTube. Also, practice lead codes data structures and algorithm series to immediately apply what you learn along the way. Once you're comfortable with these Python concepts, you're ready to dive into the very core of data science. Statistics can be split into two big families, descriptive and inferential. Descriptive statistics involve understanding the characteristics of your data and summarizing it usually through the help of visualizations. Key concepts here include measures of central tendency like mean, median, and mode, and measures of spread like standard deviation and variance. Then comes inferential statistics, which is all about making inferences from a sample of data to a larger population. You learn things like hypothesis testing, confidence intervals, correlation, and sampling techniques. For probability, you should aim to build a strong understanding of how probability distributions work and then familiarize yourself with Bayesian statistics, which is a key technique used in modern machine learning algorithms. A useful tip for learning statistics is to think about each concept in terms of examples you understand. Another powerful technique is visualizing what these concepts are trying to tell you. This kind of visualization will help you build the intuition needed as a data scientist. It's probably the one thing that will make you stand out amongst the competition. And then that's why you should check out Brilliant, the sponsor of today's video. Brilliant is an interactive learning platform designed for hands-on learning, with courses that cover everything from math, statistics, probability, to data analysis, which makes it ideal for mastering data science concepts. What I love most is how much thought and effort has clearly gone into these exercises. They're designed to keep you engaged and make learning feel intuitive. Plus, if you're into computer science or want to sharpen your Python skills, they've got courses for that too. Studies show that retention is six Six times higher with visual interactive learning, and I can totally see why with Brilliant's approach. I mean, look at this graph which gradually shows how the mean changes as you change distribution of data points. These visual exercises that introduce the concept of standard deviation for measuring spread instead of ranges. It's not just the simple stuff. You start with the basics, but you gradually move on to more advanced topics like Bayes' theorem or time series. I personally have been really enjoying this course on LLMs, which is a new addition. So if you're ready to level up your skills and enhance your learning experience, Experience, click the link in the description, brilliant.org slash data sensei, to get a 30 day free trial plus a 20% off of your annual subscription. Thanks again to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. And don't forget to click the link in the description, brilliant.org slash data sensei, or scan the QR code on screen to get a 30 day free trial plus a 20% off of your annual subscription. Learning the theory alone is not enough, so I think this is the perfect time for you to start using Python to analyze data. As you learn in statistics, you should immediately apply these concepts by leveraging NumPy and Pandas to clean and transform data, as well as Matplotlib and Seaborn to build insightful visualizations. This process is called exploratory data analysis. This is the most fun you're going to have as a data scientist, so just go on Kaggle, pick a domain that interests you, and go ham on these data sets doing as much EDA as you can. Now you are set for the machine learning part of your journey, and I recommend starting out with Andrew Eng's machine learning specialization. It covers the foundational algorithms you need, both supervised and unsupervised learning, and later on in the course, you move on to more advanced algorithms like recommender systems and reinforcement learning. As you go through these, the best thing that you can do is challenge yourself by coding these algorithms from scratch in Python. This will really help you understand how they work under the hood. As for hands-on applications, there are just many courses on Udemy. Alternatively, you can just jump right into Kaggle and practice the machine learning cycle over and over again. Focus heavily on pre-processing techniques, feature engineering, and model evaluation. Mastering these will not only make you a better data scientist, but also make a significant difference in the performance of your models. The next skill we'll cover is a bit different, but it's as important. A solid foundation in SQL and different data source systems is crucial. I've been using SQL every day in pretty much all of the day roles I've had. Good news is, as a data scientist, 
scientist, you only have to focus on these three key areas. Get the basics of database design, understand how relational modeling works, how tables are related to one another, constraints, types of relationships, difference between OLAP and OLTP. The business logic is usually carried within the model, so understanding that is crucial. Then you develop your querying skills to extract data in any shape you want it to be. Your aim should be to have a nuanced understanding of how select statements work, the order of execution, and the various classes and techniques to query a database, which should lead us to efficiency. And that's where you'll dive in into query optimization, analyzing explain plans, and how indexes work. Each clause or functionality in SQL offer a nuanced performance trade-off that you should be familiar with. SQL is a technical skill that requires a lot of practice. So get into the habit of solving challenges on Stratascratch, HackRank, or LeetCode, and try your best to go for a solution that beats most submissions. SQL is not only super important for extracting data from a database or a data warehouse, it plays a much higher role than that, and you'll see why later on. Along the same lines, knowing NoSQL systems like MongoDB is also important. It stores data as JSON documents, and thus it has like a more flexible schema, it's highly scalable, and they're pretty fast for reads too. So learn how to work with those as you're likely to come across them in the future. At this point, you're ready to dive into deep learning, which is covered in the later part of Andrew Eng's machine learning specialization. You can follow his Coursera blueprint to study the fundamentals of these algorithms. Next, consider specializing in a specific family of neural networks, either NLP, natural language processing, computer vision, or audio processing. As of right now, many companies, including the one I work for, are investing heavily in LLMs, they're more mature, and their business applications are broader right now. However, your choice of specialization should align with your interests and what excites you most. Now, I'd say that you have the core AI knowledge, but you'll need to use it in the real world. Hence, the need to be familiar with big data technologies, distributed storage systems like Hadoop, and distributed computing, where Apache Spark is going to be your best ally. Begin with Spark's architecture, then focus on data manipulation. This is where you leverage PySpark to write Spark jobs in Python, but you know where else you'll be using more of? It's SQL. Spark SQL is well optimized and really effective when dealing with structured data. On the same note, I highly recommend using Spark with Databricks. It's an incredible tool with growing demand and integrates seamlessly with popular cloud platforms. Another tool worth exploring is DataIQ. It's designed for data science workflows. It's also so user-friendly. Both Databricks and DataIQ offer community editions, so just sign up and start building projects. This brings us to the final and probably most important skill, because it's where you're going to turn your models into products that can actually do something. And that's deploying your machine learning models onto cloud services like AWS, GCP, and Azure. Practice versioning, monitoring, and maintaining machine learning models in production is like managing latency, drift, and resource utilization, are the prior concern amongst other KPIs. This is pretty advanced, so at first, get an overview of the basics, then consider getting a machine learning engineer certification to study this at your own pace after you get a job as a data scientist. All companies are moving to the cloud and you should too. And with all that, I can confidently say that you are a competent data scientist. Some key considerations I need to highlight is the fact that I didn't talk about math because unlike statistics, you're not going to be solving equations all day. All the math is pretty much taken care of by the code you'll be using. Nobody cares about portfolio projects anymore. So the best thing you can do right now is to aim to get an internship. That's by far the best way to get a job in the current state of the market. But maybe more on that in another video. I know it seems like a lot of things to learn at once. Take it step by step. I don't think that AI jobs are going anywhere anytime soon. I could have easily said that you can do all this in four to six months. But I don't think that's fair to data science. All right, my friends, I wish you happy learning. Drop a like and subscribe if this was helpful. And until the next one.